Hi, my name is Janik Stemmler and I am a resident physician at University Hospital of Cologne in Germany. Today, I would like to present a publication of the Fungiscope team here in Cologne. The paper, which was led by my colleague Daniela Seidel, was published in critical reviews in microbiology already last year and analyzes epidemiology, risk factors and prognosis of Skidosporiosis and Lomentosporiosis. Here you see our transparency declaration. And to start with Fungiscope, it's a web-based patient registry on rare invasive fungal infections and aspergillosis and includes clinical data retrospectively collected from patients all over the world. We identified patients with Skidosporiosis or Lomentospora prolificans infection, which was formerly known as Skidosporium prolificans, and we identified these patients in the registry and added then a literature search in PubMed with the here displayed search terms since 2000 to identify case reports. We included reports from 33 different countries. Here we can observe different geographically distribution patterns of Skidosporiosis, which is predominant in Middle European and Northern American countries and Australia, here displayed on the left side. While Lomentosporiosis was mostly reported in Australia, here one might expect a reporting bias. And the white colored countries have no reports, which does not mean that these species do not occur there. Here we see risk factors and underlying conditions of patients with these infections. The green bars stand for Skidosporiosis and the dark blue for Lamentosporiosis. In patients with Skidosporiosis, we observed a predominance of solid organ transplant patients and also near drowning events. The latter is almost an exclusive risk factor for Skidosporiosis. Whereas Lamentospora appears to be more frequent in hematological patients. The sites of infections bear some differences of the two species. Skidosporiosis was detected predominantly in skin and deep soft tissue infections and in the lungs. CNS infections are almost exclusively associated with near drowning events. Lamentosporiosis was most frequently detected as bloodstream infections and in the lung. These two frequently affected sites combined lead also to the high percentage of 59% of disseminated infections. What about the outcome of these infections? In green and yellow, disseminated infections of immunocompromised and immunocompetent patients are displayed respectively. Dissemination has a worse outcome in both populations and with both species. Lomentosporiosis dissemination has an even worse outcome and median survival of these patients was only around one week. So what is the most adequate treatment? On the right side you see in vitro susceptibility data show Skidosporium species which shows low minimum inhibitory concentrations for voriconazole only, while almost all other agents have pan-high MICs raising the suspicion of resistance. And for Lamentospora this looks even worse, because it's the case for almost all antifungals tested, as you see on the right side. The most frequently used antifungal agents in treatment are voriconazole, amphotericin B and itraconazole. Interestingly, terbinafine was sometimes used as combination treatment with voriconazole and, in this data set, a trend of improved survival was seen but statistic tests were not significant. Another recent publication including fungiscope data was just published by Jeffrey Jenks and colleagues on this combination therapy. One word concerning monot therapy of amphotericin B. It seems to be associated with the worse outcome as displayed on this slide. It even shows the same trend if voriconazole was included as a combination agent. 
This effect was seen independently of infection site, so localized or disseminated infections, and also independently of surgical treatment. So to conclude this talk, Sclerosporiosis and lamentosporiosis exist also in the non-immunocompromised patient population. These infections frequently present as fungemia and unfortunately have a devastating outcome. These species seem to be resistant to most antifung antifungals due to high minimum inhibitory concentrations and voriconazole treatment is associated with the best outcome in relation. Promising options for treatment include the addition of terbinafine and new drugs currently under investigation such as olorofim or fosmanagepix. If you want to contact us on this topic or other scientific projects, you may write us an email. Uh, you can contact us via Twitter with the handle at Fungiscope or just comment below this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell.